good. What's going on? As you can see, the normal story, we're on the road, we're heading out. I'm in the beautiful lush Kwazulu-Natal coast, well, on the beautiful Kwazulu-Natal coast, um, just north of Schlanga, down here in uh, just side of Durban. And we're heading about two and a half hours that way. Uh, we're first gonna stop off at the little coastal town called St. Lucia, which if you've seen any of my videos, you'll know we find quite a lot of good stuff there. Um, after that, I am getting out to Shishlue, joining uh, my friend Anton at his lodge in Kumbi, and we're gonna get up to a bunch of good stuff there, find some herbs. Um, the frog should be absolutely buzzing at the moment, so hopefully you're gonna get loads of cool frogs. Gonna probably be there for about the next week or so, and then we're gonna really get stuck into some of Zululand's uh, really special herbs. You're gonna look for, look out for a lot of forest cobras, uh, puff adders, get stuck into tons of road cruising. Um, depending on how it goes, you might have to split it up into a couple of videos. But for now, we've got two hours to kill. I've got two hours to kill. So I will catch you when I'm in San Lucia. Should have closed my window for that. So we're just road cruising, looking for snakes, and they're just these weird frogs on the road. Like I'm not sure what species they are, but must be some kind of bullfrog because these guys are pretty damn big. But yeah, they don't look very friendly, so I'm getting out of here later. So you know if we're out in the summer, we're definitely hitting the roads uh, and that's exactly what we're doing tonight. Um, I say we, I'm actually here with a buddy of mine, Frank, he's in his vehicle and we're pretty much going to tag team this and just drive the similar roads at sort of different intervals and just increase our chances of seeing some stuff. And then yeah, we got a couple of points where we're just going to meet up with one another and just see, you know, if anyone's found anything. Or well, obviously we'll just, if we see something really cool, I guess we'll just get in touch and we can go check it out. Um, we should see loads of other animals around here out tonight. I mean, this is sort of a wetland park, so there are hippos. There's something in the road there, but I think it's trash. Yeah, there's hippos, there's hyena, there's leopard. Um, there's all sorts of stuff. You can hear the frogs are going mental out here. But yeah, we'll catch up when we find something. So I just stopped at this giant puddle that we drove through earlier and have a listen at the chaos out here. Frogs are going absolutely mental. Um, it's a little bit sketchy out here. I mean, there are hippos, crocodiles and hyenas and leopards around here. So I don't think I'm going to stick around here for too long. Just going to wait for Frank to get here. We're going to have a look at these puddles and yeah, then we're going to carry on cruising. So I managed to find one of these sharp nosed grass frogs before it sort of shot off into oblivion as the previous frogs have. But from here there's loads of other frog crawling, so let's see what else we're going to turn up. So finally, a uh, bit of a special on the board for tonight. This is a mottled shovel nosed frog. Um, there's no kidding why it's called a shovel nosed frog. You can see it's got that sharp pointed little nose and this bubbly little body. Um, they spend most of their time underground and only really come out when it's been heavy rains. Like as you can see, the ground is pretty saturated. Um, this guy doesn't want to stick around thanks to that, and we're gonna get on out of here. So, I know chameleons are a firm favorite amongst most people, and let me tell you, baby flapping chameleons are even cooler. And you can see this little dude just chilling on the grass stem. And if you look in the background here, I just spotted it while I was talking about that one. Here's another one. Um, so obviously a clutch would have hatched recently and these old guys just crawl up the grass stems and hang on to their life. Always good to see little chameleons in numbers. So we just mission a little bit further up the road. Um, as you can see, yet more hatchling flatneck chameleons. There's one. Um, where is this other guy? Somewhere around here. I just spotted them. There's another guy just strutting, chilling on the leaves, having a little sleep. So this is going to be the last comedian I show, but just give you a size reference because I realized I hadn't done a great job of that with the others. Um, these guys are probably only, I would assume, not more than two weeks old. Um, but just from the size of my fingers, you can see these guys are absolutely my knee. 
sheep or awesome. So let's head out. Good morning. It is way too early. What is the time? 10 to 6. I just got inside the Eastern Shore section of the Smugalisa Wetland Park. Um, we're going to just have a pretty mellow cruise around today. Um, maybe see some big animals. Of course, always on the lookout for some cool snakes and lizards, but really is looking pretty decent out here today. But I am tired as a sick dog. Um, yeah, we're going to carry on, and if I see anything, I'll check in with you guys. So how cool is this? I picked up this little dwarf burrowing skink late last night under a rock, so I kept it to get photographs in the morning. And overnight in the container, it's actually dropped two little babies. You can just see their tiny little rear limbs. Um, that's super interesting. Hardly anything is known about the biology, let alone the reproduction of these dwarf burrowing skinks. So this is like super, super interesting. Uh, we'll get some measurements of the babies and obviously the adult. And yeah, maybe we can write a little short note communication just about the reproduction of these clodies, dwarf brine skinks. Pretty awesome. You can see the little babies are absolutely tiny. Well, this is certainly not a herb that we were looking for, but I guess it's one of the big five. This is a buffalo. And um, if you just poke his head out, but he's too busy having breakfast, it seems. Um, I'm not a huge fan of these guys, they're actually pretty dangerous. Um, but I mean, he's just hanging out, chilling, so not really any in, in any sort of danger. You can actually see how big they are in relation to the shadow of my car just behind it. They're absolutely massive. Um, I'm hoping to see if we can't spot any frogs or some sleeping snakes, well, basking snakes just on this vegetation on the side here. But later, bro. So we stop and have a look at these drain covers. Um, I pulled out a couple of frogs. There's an African clawed frog. And I also pulled out a East African puddle frog. I'm just gonna release them. I mean, the water's literally right over there. I'm just gonna chuck them over in there. But yeah, it's, it's quite a shame. I mean, I've been here a couple of times and the time before there were hundreds of frogs in here. Fortunately, there's just two. So these guys get to live another day. I was just leaving this picnic site where we just went into the bird hide and I was just looking at this little yellow tree right under the neath, right beneath the yellow tree it's probably feasting on some of these flowers we got a little eastern hinge back to us. this is Kinexus zombiensis zombiensis um, this is quite a little one they get probably about double the size but yeah nice to spot him just basking in the early morning sun before it gets too hot but before this brother and escapes, we are going to grab some photos and I'll give you a better look at him. See why they call them hinge tortoises. Like some of the box turtles in the US and many of the, the species of tortoises around the world that sort of have a flap opening in the front where the tortoise or the turtle hide. These guys have a little flap at the back where they can actually close up and sort of seal off. See, here's a really attractive Argus reed frog. Uh, a little bit different to the specimens you saw in the last video, uh, just purely, purely based on distribution. Um, I got a couple of these on the road last night and I just managed to turn one up just sitting on a reed, not too far from where I saw the ones last night. So yeah, I thought we'd give you a good look at this guy. You can see he's got this really nice yellow band running from the tip of the snout over the eye and sort of almost right to the end of the body. These really nice bright orange limbs. Really attractive little frogs. I always enjoy seeing them. So things have been a little bit slow the last hour or so, but I just found this really beautiful Mozambique brownback tree frog, or we also just call them brownback tree frogs. It's pretty simple why they call them what they do. You can see he's got this really nice brown patch on his back there. He's got these really big 
sort of tubercles on each finger which are obviously perfectly suited for climbing up the trees. Yeah, this is quite an interesting specimen. You can see he's got quite a lot of green um, on his sort of snout there towards the back of the back behind the rear limbs. And the reason for that is they're actually when they're juveniles, they're bright green. So this guy's obviously just kept a little bit of those juvenile colorations, but this is a full grown adult. Uh, you can see just next to my finger, pretty decent sized frog compared to some of the little reed frogs we've been seeing. But yeah, I'm not gonna stress this guy too much. He's sitting quite nicely, so grab a couple more photographs and just leave him be. So here's a rather unique species of frog. This is called a southern fern nest frog. And as you can see, this is how they lay their eggs. They create these big foam nests typically over the water and actually lay the eggs in the foam mass. And then what typically happens is the tadpoles hatch and they drop down into the water below. Super interesting adaptation. So I just got this little guy shooting across the path here in the sand forest. This is a giant legless skink. Um, as you can see, as the name suggests, they're a completely limbless skink that burrow in the soft, soft soil amongst the leaf litter, amongst the grass, um, as you can see he's doing now. Um, and as, obviously, as you can see, he's got a little tongue similar to a snake, um, but of course he's got that little beak, um, that light gray area on the edge of the face, which is a really easy identified to tell apart from a snake, um, as well as obviously having movable eyelids, much unlike a snake. Um, many times people think these guys are, are snakes and are sense, senselessly killed. Um, but I mean, grab the couple of photographs of this guy really quick and see his short stubby tail there. And I'm just gonna let him go and carry on his day in the undergrowth. So I just found a red toad just sitting out here in the shade. I don't know what he thinks he's doing. He should be sleeping or underground or he should be somewhere. He should not be out in the heat of the day. The forest cobras are going to devour you, friend. Oh, there you go. Later, friend. Be gone with you. Ah, oh, so much chaos. I uh, just walked on this puppet, but I don't have any tools or any hooks or anything, so I'm just gonna have to get him slide away because I ain't grabbing this guy. I mean, you've got this entire field and you want to sit on the road and now your friend wants to cross. Oh man, so inconsiderate. So this is the highly venomous twig snake, also called the vine snake or the southern twig snake. And as you can see, it's got a super, super cryptic camouflage. The head, super pointed, got the typical keyhole pupil. And the camouflage of these snakes is absolutely phenomenal. They spend most of their times in the trees and the shrubs, the dense canopy, hunting things like chameleons, tree agamas, and particularly other snakes, including the Eastern Natal green snake, the spotted bush snake, and any other little arboreal snakes that it can manage to trap down and consume. They have a potently toxic hemotoxic venom, which unfortunately causes your blood to thin, causing excessive blood loss, and you'll stop bleeding out your ears, your eyes, your nose, 
and any sort of open orifices out of your body. A really, really potent toxic snake, although shy, unfortunately we, we see very few, if any, bites from these snakes. There is no antivenom for the snake, so the only successful treatment for a twig snake bite is to receive immediate medical attention, and that would be in the form of blood transfusions until the body can be stabilized, the red blood cell count increases, and then you're pretty much good to go. But the best advice for a twig snake, if you ever see one of these guys, leave him alone and you'll be sure to be out of harm's way. If I zoom in here, you'll see it's not quite doing it, but a typical threat display of the twig snake, it'll actually inflate its throat, puff it up nice and big like a balloon, and then that serves as a warning sign. This snake means business. But yeah, I'm gonna grab a couple more photos of this little guy. It's actually being really, really cooperative. And then we're just gonna let him go. And that's it, the southern twig snake. So good morning, we're just walking back, getting some wife at the lodge, and right on the path is this little bugger. This is the Schlegel's beak blind snake. Um, these guys get a heck of a lot bigger than this. This is a relatively small one. But these guys are actually generally an absolute nightmare to photograph. They do not sit still. You'll see once I put him here on the ground, he just fizzles out. And does this thing. She goes big blind snake. What on earth is happening? Before I could even get to the main part of the lodge after just seeing that she goes big blind snake, I got this eastern and south green snake just booking it across the path. Um, it was moving with some crazy sort of veracity. I don't know if it was chasing a skink or something, but I just saw it darting across the path. And I managed to get it to sit still for a hot second. You can see it's got those nice yellowy eyes which set it apart from the spotted bush snake. But yeah, these green snakes are one of my favorite species, so always froth to see these up here on the north coast of KZN. These things are green snake. So today seems like it's firing on all cylinders. I'm not even supposed to be herping yet. Um, I just flipped a little rock in the background there and flipped this little Zygaspis arancola, the Mkuchilan round-headed worm lizard. Um, you can see they sort of chill out in these soft sandy soils below the leaf litter, just cruising around eating presumably small invertebrates. Um, this guy is relatively calm at the moment, but it can be an absolute nightmare um, to photograph. Let me try to give him in an open area and I'll try to give you guys a better look at him now. Um, you can see he didn't stick around for long, but you can see they're almost quite segmented, much like worms. But yeah, the round headed worm. So we switched up locations. It is hot as anything. The temperature's really been dialed right up. So I'm not super hopeful we're going to find some much here. So just kicking it around here in these sort of bathroom and shower facilities. Um, just at the eco camp here, hoping to see some sort of stuff moving around and or maybe even just hanging out in the shade. But yeah, it is super hot. So I think we're going to kick it here for a little bit and then we're probably going to head back to the sand forest where it's not 7,000 degrees. Are there any snakes in the toilet? Uh, no. <laughs> Always got to check. Um, sometimes in the toilet system. So absolutely fizzing. Headed back to the sand forest. Got ourselves a very good slug there. That's the end of the video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.